One of the most oft-repeated truisms about the American Civil War is that the northern ranks were filled with new immigrants off the boat into a blue uniform, saving the northerners from having to fight for themselves. And there's a good bit of truth in that, especially later in the war. There were a lot of Germans here, but they were not new immigrants. They were, by and large, the product of the emigrations after the late 1840s revolutions in Europe that failed. But they were Germans for sure in the 11th Corps. Their commander had been Franz Siegel, who was about as Teutonic as he could be. They were now under O.O. O. Howard as they constituted the far right wing of the Federal Army here. When Jackson's troops lined up two miles long on either side of them, the 11th Corps was actually along the road visible behind me there, the Orange Turnpike, and they were all facing south. So the bravest of these 11th Corps Germans and the others in the Corps who turned to face the Confederate onslaught had an enemy a mile on either side of him, and he really had no viable option but to turn and run. Some of them became famous for their resistance. Uh, Dilger, the battery commander, received the Medal of Honor and well deserved it, retreating down the road, firing his Napoleon rifle. But it was a hard day for the Germans, and the army blamed them. They talked funny. Their officers did indeed dress uh, like a bunch of silly fops with all sorts of dugaws hanging off their uniforms, and their names were Schimmel, Fenning, uh, Krizanowski, and so forth. But in fact, this was not the 11th Corps' fault. These same fellows would suffer another outflanking not of their own doing at Gettysburg two months precisely from today. And then they would go west where they had considerable success, among other things, going up Missionary Ridge famously late in 1863.